<sighs> this is uh two three. No, two two. Two two. Two two. two, two. This is subsets and proper subsets. So when we're dealing with subsets and proper subsets, we're still dealing with sets, but we're just defining some more stuff. We're really not doing any operations yet. This is very similar to equal sets and equivalent sets with a little twist. Um, When we say that A is a subset of B, the uh, underlying understanding is uh, this. Every element of A is also an element of B. Every element of A is also an element of B. Can these sets be equal? If it's yes. Exactly. Because if they're equal, every element of A is also an element of B and vice versa. Um, so that becomes really nice. Now, one little problem here. Remember, mathematicians are extremely lazy and they're not going to want to write A is a subset of B because that's just too wordy. And they might spell one of those simple words wrong. You never know. Um, so the symbolism is this. A is a subset. It's a elongated C. It's an elongated C. So it's a very flat top, very flat bottom. Or supposed to be. It's just hard to draw. And then a line underneath it. B. So this reads, A is a subset of B. A is a subset of B. Now that symbol looks very similar to something else. The elements are... No, it does not look like the elements right. in it. It looks like less than, less than or equal to be precise. Less than or equal uses a V. And then they put that line under it. So when you say 2 is less than or equal to 5, or X is less than or equal to 5, which would probably be better, you could be 5 or smaller. 5 or smaller. So you can kind of think of this in the same way. A can be smaller than B. Or A can be exactly the same size as B, that equal is that little line in the bottom. So A can equal B, but A can also be a little bit smaller. But the main thing is, every element of A also has to be inside of B. I'll give you a small example. Um, for instance, A could equal something like 2, 3, 4. And B could equal 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I'm talking real simple example here. But technically, the idea is not hard. It's just your interpretation of the idea that gets a little fuzzy. So, does it fit the definition? Is every element of A also an element of B? Yes. Yeah. Two is an A, but two is also in B. Three is an A, and three is in B. Four is an A, and four is in B. So we can say, for uh, without a shadow of a doubt, that A is definitely a subset of B. Guaranteed without a doubt. Are they equal? No. 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 Are they equivalent? No. no. No, because one has three elements, the other one has five. Wow. Oh. So it's a subset. But it is a subset. It be contained in the yeah. Same elements. All the elements of A have to be inside of B. B in, in any order whatsoever. So what about C equals... Um, Two, five, nine, and D equals five, nine, two. I don't know why this would confuse people, but it yes. does. Yes. 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 Does the order matter? No. no. Does it matter how I call the roll? No. no. But most teachers, you know, go alphabetically, but I can mix it up, confuse you all. So they have the exact same elements, so C is definitely a subset of D. D. 
Now here's a weird question. Is D a subset of C? No. no. Yes. 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 Which one? Yes. yes. <laughs> Every element of D is also an element of C. C. Now, if you can write these two in opposite order, like this commute over that symbol, then this also means that C is equal to D. That's another definition of equality, that there are subsets of each other. They are subsets of each other, therefore they are equal. So if you have equal sets, they are also subsets of each other. All three of those are true. <laughs> <sighs> that makes sense, right? Okay. So let's mess it up a little bit more. Oh, let's not do that. <laughs> that cool enough? Yes. There's this thing called proper subsets. This is where people start going, oh my gosh, this is horrible. But it's not. It's actually a very simplistic idea. To be a proper subset, you only have to make sure two things are true. Uh, number one, you have to make sure that the first set is a subset of the second set. So I'll just use A and B for this set. So I want, I'm trying to show that A is a proper subset of B. So the first thing you have to show is that they are actually subsets of one another, that A is a subset of B. The second step is really important. A cannot equal B. If those two things are true. Wait, but you just said C is equal to B. Uh, uh, here C is equal to B. Is A equal to B here? No. no. Yeah. So over here I'll write A definitely not equal to B. Why? Because this one only has three elements and this one has five. That's guaranteed that they're not equal. So to be a proper <laughs> subset, you first have to be A. Subset, but then those subsets cannot, or those sets cannot be equal. equal. So, out of these two examples, A and B are they proper subsets? Yes. Yes, yes because they're subsets, but they are definitely not, not equal. equal. Can C and D be proper subsets? No. no. Because they are equal. equal. So in this case, the symbol for a proper subset is this. What's missing? That line. And that line means equal to. Equal, to. equal to. So I'm getting rid of the possibility that they are equal. So that's all a proper subset is. These C and D are definitely not a proper subset here because they are equal. A and B are definitely proper subsets so because they are not equal. I'm just confused because the first one has the equal sign under the C. Yeah, proper here. subset. Here, here, here. here. No, down. Here. A, right? A, yeah. A, B, oh, a, B, okay. to be a, see, this symbol doesn't mean that they are equal. You know, 2 is less than or equal to 5 is a true statement. They're definitely not equal. It's a true statement because of that word or. They're less than or equal. When you write these two symbols together, it really says they're a proper subset or they are equal. But we just shorten it to subset. Does that make sense? Okay. So, to be a proper subset, you have to be subsets first, and they definitely cannot be equal. equal. This is easy. Again, it's a lot of symbols, but if you read it in English, it makes sense. So, the important thing is make sure you get this into English. Do not say the word subset. <coughs> subset means absolutely nothing to you. It means something to me, but it means nothing to you until you get used to it. The words for you are... All the elements on the left are on the right. right. That's the important part. Ah. Da -da -da. Mm. <clears throat> oh, I want to get into fun land. Little theory. Yes. Subsets. And the empty set. This is where the fun begins. What I'm going to prove in about a few minutes is wherever you are, there's always somebody next to you. Or I'm sorry, there's always nobody next to you. Mm. I gotta get the phrasing of this right. Wherever you are, there is always nobody next to you. How do you prove that if they're not there to begin with? But how can it be false because you can look next to you. But then somebody might be there, but there could be somebody in between you, but they're nobody. 
Yeah, what? exactly. Wherever you are, there's always nobody next to you. Yeah, wherever you are, there's always nobody next to you. I can prove that is a true statement. Ready? This is how you do it. Um, over here, I'm going to uh, have a set. I'm just going to make up a set. On the other side, I'm going to list out all their... Oh, wait a minute. Before I can do that. Yeah, no, forget that. But that's later. Um, hmm. How do I want to start this? Uh, let's say that we have... Uh, when I write this, A is a subset of B. And I'm going to put a little cross through it. Now that says A is not a subset of B. B. What does that mean in English? They do not they have, do have proper subsets. There is a element in A that is not in B. That is not in B. There is an element in A that is not in B. All I need is one element, and automatically they become non-subsets. For instance, just a quick little example, if A is equal to 1, 2, and B is equal to 2, 3, 4, are A and B subsets? No. No. Because A can't be a subset of B because A has 1 and B does not. Therefore, they're not subsets. So I would write it as A is not a subset of B. Are they equal? No. no. Are they equivalent? No. no. Just making sure. Okay, so why do I need this statement? Well, I want to prove the empty set is a subset of any set. Yeah, the empty set is a subset of any set. Now remember what the, the definition of subset is. There's an element in the first one that has to be in, in the other one. The problem here is there's no element in the empty set. So how do I show or not show that it's in A? You can't do it directly. So what we're going to do is indirect proof. We're going to assume the opposite is true. Is there two P's in opposite? O P P Oppos. You know, those mathematicians and spelling. Assume the opposite, that the empty set is not a subset of A. Now, the, the cool thing about doing this, this is called proof by contradiction. Proof by con contradiction. We're going to assume the opposite is true. We're going to come up with some kind of thing that is crazy, and therefore the beginning statement must be wrong. And the opposite of assuming the, uh, that they're not subsets is that they actually are. are. Okay. So I'm assuming that the subset or the empty set is not a subset of A. Therefore, the empty set has an element that is not in A. Oh, oh. Three dots, therefore. Uh, I'm sorry, therefore. <laughs> you could write the word therefore. Mathematicians and their symbolism. You might as well get used to it because you're going to have to do it eventually. This means therefore. Therefore. So by my assumption, the empty set has an element that is not in A. Uh, by this little definition, there's an element in A that is not in B. What is wrong with that blue statement? There's something wrong with that statement. There is no There's not an element in an empty set. The empty set has an element. That makes absolutely no, no sense. sense. Because the empty set is empty. No elements. So therefore, this statement has to be false, and the opposite of it must be true. Therefore, we can say that the empty set is a subset of all sets. Isn't that cool? No. I love stuff like this. <laughs> so, the empty set is an element of all sets. Is a subset. Is a subset of all sets. What part? I kind of went.
let's do this part slow. Saying that A is not a subset of B says that there is an element in A that is not in B. We all agreed with that statement. Okay. That makes sense. Then I said, prove that the empty set is a subset of all sets. Well, that's impossible to prove because there's nothing there. So I assume the opposite, which is the empty set is not a subset of A. Mm -hmm. Complete opposite. By saying the subset of the empty set is not a subset of A, we're saying that the empty set has an element that is not an A from up here. Mm -hmm. But the empty set has no... The elements. So the statement is absolutely crazy. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the statement has to be... False. And the opposite of it must be... True. true. If so you're not true, apart. you're definitely false. If you're not false, you're definitely true. It's just a, a weird thing in math. So we come up with this idea. The empty set is a subset of all sets. You can always write this, or you can write this. Oh, uh, subset. And you get that. Both of those are true. The empty set is always going to be a subset of any set, including itself. I mean, for instance, is this a true statement? Uh, true or false? This is another one of my famous true or false questions on a test. I love ones like this. Because you have to true. understand two things, actually three. They're both the same. You have to understand that the empty set and the null set are exactly the same. Therefore, they are true. equal, and equal sets are automatically subsets. So this statement is true. true. All right, how about this one? False. Why is it false? Because it ain't got an equal thing on it. Because they are equal. Well, this one is definitely false. Sets are equal. Remember what I said about false. You gotta explain. You gotta explain. This is false because the sets are equal. They're exactly the same thing. Whew. Isn't that cool? Now nobody's always next to you. <laughs> Someone keeps watching. following me around. Nobody keeps following me. <laughs> you can be paranoid. People like that. Conspiracy theories. Well, don't erase that right there to your right. Just check. I won't touch it. All right, thanks. All right, now I can build up. You like number of subsets. I already started this one, but let's go back to it. If I have a given set, I want to know how many subsets can I break it up into. So what we're going to look for here is a pattern. We're going to look for a pattern between the starting set and how many sets we end up with. So we'll start off very easy. The first set that we're going to throw at you has absolutely no elements in it. That's boring. How many subsets does it have? None. One. 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 <laughs> it can be a subset of itself, so you'd write it down. There you go. So, no elements has exactly one subset itself. All right, let's give it an element. Let's say um, A, little a. How many subsets does the set of A have? Two. 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 Which are they? The self and the empty set. Itself and the empty set. I'm always going to put the empty set first. And itself last. Okay, so that has two. So, ah, darn it. One element has two subsets. What if I have two elements, A and B? Three. Three. Really? That's it? No. The empty set? A. The set of A? The set of B. The set of A, B. Four. So we'll start off with the empty set. <laughs> the set of A is a subset of the set AB. The set of B is a subset of the set AB. And the set of itself, remember? Itself can be its subset. Okay. <laughs> if I have three elements, A, B, C. Hold on now, you're going to look too fast here. One, two, three, four, five. C, C, three, four, five. One, five. one two, three. Go one more and we'll be fine. Eight. 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 Yep. Because eight. you got to do A, B, B, C, B, A, C. Yeah. Oh, you got to break them down. The empty set? The set of A? Okay. The set of B? 
the set of C, the set of AB, the set of AC, the set of BC, and the set of ABC. BA is the same thing as AB. BA is the same thing as AB. CBA is the same thing as ABC. <laughs> Order does not matter. matter. It's like if you have a basketball team and you put them on the court, does it matter which one goes up there first? No. no. You, don't, you care less as long as they're all in the group together. So order in, in set language does not matter. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. I could go more, but let's put it this way. If I have four here, how many am I going to have over there? Sixteen. Always doubling. Double. Always doubling. Okay. All right. So let's look for a neat little. Well, the doubling thing is one good thing, but I want to get a precise answer out of this. So up here, I'm going to call this um, n is equal to zero. What does n represent? Natural number. No, no, no. Capital N is natural number. Little n is cardinal number. Oh, cardinal. Cardinal number. Remember, little n is cardinal number. The number of elements in the set. Okay. So the cardinal number of the first one is zero. The cardinal number of the second one is uh, one. one, just the set of A. The cardinal number of the next one is two. two. The cardinal number of the third one is three. three. All right. Now, this one is actually kind of easy. With n is equal to one, this becomes two to the first power. Two times, uh, well, itself, two. Gives you two. This one becomes four, which is two to the second power. <coughs> Doubling, you know. And then this one would be 2 to the third power. So it's 2 raised to the cardinal number of the set. The only problem comes with the top one, 2 to the 0. Anything raised to the 0 power is automatically equal to 1. Right? You do. Trust me, right? Oh, come on. You don't trust me. If you have x cubed divided by x cubed, X cubed divided by X cubed is it's equal to one. one. But there's that law of exponents that say you have to subtract them, right? And it becomes X raised to the 3 minus 3, better known as? Zero. 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 So anything you raise to a zero power is automatically equal to? One. one. So that works out perfectly fine. So when I get down here to N is equal to 4, then over here it's going to be 2 to the better known as? Two to the fourth is equal to 16. So here's the formula. The formula is this. The number of subsets of set A is equal to A to, uh, I'm sorry, not A, 2 raised to the NA. What's N stand for? Cardinal, no. cardinal number. So it's 2 raised to the cardinal number of the set. Two raised to the cardinal number of the set. For example, set B is equal to the set subsets does this set possibly have? If I started breaking them down, I'd cut a whole ton of them, and I don't want to write them all down. So the first thing you have to do is figure out how many elements are in this set. Where does it start? Four. It's the first natural number that is bigger than three. So it's going to go four, five, all the way up to 17. Uh, I guess you could just count but it's easier if you look at a smaller one. If you have 4 through 10, how many numbers are in the set? Well, it's 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's 7. The, the trick is this. What's 10 minus 4? 6. And 7 is 1 more. So you do 17 minus 4, which is 13. That gives you a total of 14 elements. So this is B. And N of B is equal to? 14. The number of elements in this set is 14. 
That trick only works if they're all in a row. Okay, like you subtract me. Yeah, because 10 minus 4 is 6, and this one has 7 elements. You'll find that it's always that case. You take the big one minus the small one, add one. It just works. Uh, if you start off with 3 and you go up to um, 11, well, that's 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. That's 9 elements, right? 11 minus 3 is 8, plus 1 is 9. It's just a trick. I'm recognizing a pattern. And the pattern is you take the big one minus the small one, get an answer, add one. Add one. All right, so the number of elements in B is 14, so the number of subsets is 2 raised to the 14th power. I don't have a calculator. Well, actually, I do, but I'm not going to do that. To type this in your calculator, you're going to go 2, there's a little symbol called caret, and 14. What is it? Six one six three eight four. Three, eight, four. So if you listed these out, there would be sixteen thousand three hundred and eighty four oh. subsets. Yeah. Oh. Like them them them. For extra credit, please list them all out for me. Oh. Oh. Uh, yeah, I'm joking, don't do it. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. That would be horrid. Is that all? <laughs> Did I stretch your brains too far? Yeah, yes. yes. This is early, my man. Early? It's 10 13. Plenty of time. What I put on my test. For instance, I'll write something like this. Now, you got to be very cautious. I highly suggest whenever you see something in set builder notation, get it out of set builder notation because if you leave it in, you're going to interpret it incorrectly. Be careful how you pull it out also, uh, especially with these inequalities. If it's uh, strictly less than or strictly greater than, do not include the number next to it. But if it has a little equal sign underneath it, include that number in your list. All right, so this is the natural numbers that are less than 5. So if we list them out, what are they? 1, 2, 3, and 4. One, two, three, and four. So some people say this is false because they're like, oh, they're exactly the same, so how can they be subsets? But subsets can be, that's that little line on there. So this one is true. Now, if I get rid of that little line and make it a proper subset, it's automatically false because they are equal. So be really careful with that distinction between what is a subset and what is a proper subset. Just be looking for that little bar that means it can be equal. It doesn't have to be equal, but it can be. So this one is definitely true. On the test, are you going to label which one we dealt with, the proper and the... You'll see the symbol. Okay. And you need to know how to read it. <coughs> so if you got the line... So when you see this, you say subset can be equal. Okay. All the elements of the first one have to be elements of the second one in this one. So you say that if you take the line away, it's, it's false. false. Because they are equal. equal. Because the proper subset cannot be equal. They have to be subsets, but they can't be equal. So the line is basically like possibility. Yeah, it's a possibility. Because the key word in the whole phrase is or. It's a subset, a proper subset or each. Ah, I love this stuff. Number two. Uh, um, oh, just for note purposes, I guess. Um, A, B, C, D, proper subset, X is a letter, such that X is less than or equal to D. When I say less than or equal to D, I'm talking about an alphabetical order. There is no order to alphabet other than alphabetical order. Okay. All right, again, I highly suggest you break up that second one and write it the correct way. So what are the less letters less than or equal to D? A, B, C, D. A, B, C, and D. Once you do that, the problem becomes kind of easy. It's because they are equal. because they are Because there's no uh, proper, this is a proper subset. So false. 
because they are equal. To make it true, you definitely do not want them to be equal, but in this case, they're false because they are equal. Yay! This isn't hard, right? Okay. How about this one? <laughs> it's not that That's true. <laughs> I love things like that. Oh, wait. It can only be one or the other, so be really clear about what you're saying here. The set, hold on, hold on. The set on the left is a proper subset of the set on the right. That means for the set on the left it has to have every element over here has to be an element over here. Does the left have an element? No. Yes. yes. That element is called the null set. Does the other set have the null set inside of it? No. I know it's equal to the null set, but it's not inside. So this is false because the left has one element and the right has none. none. That's backwards. So this is definitely false. <laughs> it's false. There's an element on this side that that side does not have. So they make the proper, right? No, it makes it false. This is like saying the set of one is a proper subset of the set of two and three. This doesn't make sense. This is false because one is not one in the is second not over set. Here. Oh, okay, so it's not a subset. The null set is not over here. Okay. Now, even if the null set was over here, this is a proper subset. They're equal. You can't have it. So, but in this case, this one has one element. This one has none. That can't be true. So this is false. The null set is not. In the empty set. This is not in there. It's just not there. The element that I'm talking about, this symbol, don't even think of it as null set. This symbol is not over there. If I change this to look like this, you would tell me it was false right away. Yes? Yes. I hope so. Because this has an A and this one doesn't have anything. anything. To be a subset, it has to be over there. Does that make sense? So in this case, read it as a symbol, not as the empty set. Yeah, don't even read it. It's just a symbol. No smoking. And it's not there. Uh, four. Ooh. Oh, I'm <laughs> True or false? Over here, this is read the set of five. This symbol is not subset. It is not proper subset. It is element. element. Do you see the set of five inside of there? No. no. Guaranteed this is false. 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 The set of five is not, is not five. They are different. Those elements have to be identically <coughs> read and identically written down. How about this one then? More arguments coming up. That's true. That's true. That's true. I knew the arguments would start. It's false. Be very clear in what you're saying here. You said five Definition of proper subset is every element in the first set is an element of the second set. Well, how can you be a subset if you're not even a set? That's not a set. It needs the squiggly lines. That's not even a set, so it can't even be a subset. So this is false. Because it's not a set. You have to be a set before you're a subset. What is five by itself? An element. An element. Now, if I take these two pieces in front and flip-flop them, both statements become true. true. Five is an element of this set, and the set of five is a subset of this one. But because I took them and flipped them, they both become false. So be really, really cautious of that. I have a question. All right, go for it. I want another argument. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> okay, like up here at number four. Number four. Okay. The, the five right here is the, is the first set right here. Right this one right here? Yeah. Do not read that as five. That, that is the set, set of, five. of five. Okay, the set of five. But that's important that you read it as the set of five because if you just read it as five, then that statement is true. Okay, the set of five. The set of five. Okay, but, okay, you have the set of five here, but over here it, it is like the five is in the. 
Oh, where? Yeah, I have an element of 5 in here. Yeah. But this is saying the element has to be the set of 5. To make that a true statement, you would have to write squiggly 5 is an element of the set of 3, squiggly 5, 7. They have to be identical. They have to be twins in the element sense. They don't have to be twins in the subset sense, but they have to be twins in the element sense. <sighs> So that would be the <laughs> <second time. laughs> um, How about this one? Um, two, four, six. Why do you all stop it's jumping false. to conclusions? No, it's false. It's false. This one says you're a natural number. This part says you are even. even. This says you're from two, but under seven. So this side is two, four, six. It's the even numbers between two and seven. And therefore it is equal. Therefore it is False. Because they are equal. You cannot be a proper subset and be equal. If you read this out and you write out the roster form, I'm sorry, the set builder notation into roster form, the answer usually becomes obvious. Okay. Obvious. But if you don't, things get a little fuzzy in your brains and you will just start guessing and guessing is the worst thing you could do on a test. Unless it's, you know, operations or something like that. Wake up back there. Last one, my favorite one of all time. I put this on every test, and about half the class gets it wrong. And this is what it kind of looks like. Oops. This is similar to what it looks like. And I will get answers on both sides of the fence, true and false. And I'll have a question above it that's very similarly, and they'll get that one right. Then I write this one, and they'll get it wrong. And I never understood why. But I think it's this. You see apples over here. You see fruit over here, and you're like, apple is a fruit, therefore no. this is... It's, oh, it's it's not not not, it's not, it's not oh, no, no, no. It's just saying that apples is part of the food group called fruit. And most people say, yeah, sure, apple is a fruit. But that's not what this problem is asking. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a and it don't got the bracket. This has no squigglies around it. Therefore, it is not a set. And if it's a, not a set, it can't be a... It cannot be a subset. Not a set. Here's a question. Okay, if it had the squiggly, then it would be true. true. Yes. Because it would be part of. It would be part of a subset of the fruits, a subset of the fruits. But this one, it's not even a set, so false. You can't be a subset if you're not a set to begin with. Put squigglies around it, we're perfectly fine. Or change the subset to element. You know, the little E symbol, oh, no. then that would be true also. Apple is an element of the fruits, it's but it's definitely not a subset, subset of the fruits. On its own, it has to have the squigglies. The set of apples is a subset of the fruits. <laughs> How about this one then? Um, Caffeine. <laughs> Just a quickie. True or false? <laughs> Go back in your notes and read. The empty set is a subset of all sets. So that would be true. It's guaranteed true. Nobody sitting beside This is by definition. Definitely true. 
The empty set is a subset. The empty set is a subset of anything. Of anything. That is itself. Nobody's sitting so on the side of that one. So if I wrote this, would this be true? No. Because that's not a set. Yeah, no. Oh, no. Oh, now you're off in the deep end. This is read the empty set. Which is exactly the same as the null set. Oh, and they are Therefore, this is a set, and, and it happens to be the same as this set. So Therefore, they they're equal. And that would be true. And that would be true. Why because so they can be equal. equal because that little line down there. You take that away, though. Okay, it has to be so uh, When you write this symbol, it reads null set. It's automatically a set. Because it's exactly the same as the empty set. So it is a set, it's just written without the script. And when, and, so if you and, take that line away, then it, it would be false because they're equal. They're subsets because they're equal, but they're also false if they're a proper subsets because they're equal. Well, what that was that sense. that you did when you put the brackets around and all of a sudden, and, and you said that not to look at it like oh, that, oh. to look at it like a symbol. When you do it this to way. just look at it like something. See, this is the set of okay. something on the inside. Okay. In this case, just read it as a symbol. But if it's on the outside, it means exactly the same as the empty set. All right. Wait, say okay. In this case, where you have the set of the empty set, that's re really how it reads. Technically, you can write it this way, too. The set of the empty set. This is the reason that this symbol exists, because this symbolism, messy. Squiggly, 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 squiggly. It's the set of the empty set. So they came up with this other symbol, the null set, so you can write the set of the empty set nicer. Okay. But it means exactly the same thing as two squigglies with nothing in between. So we need set this would be the set of the null set is the same thing as the set of the empty set. But both of them have how many elements in it? One. Therefore, it's not empty. It's not empty because it has one element. And in that case, you just read this as a symbol. This becomes basically the same as that. How many elements are in this one? One. How many elements in this one? One. Technically, they're the same number of elements. So therefore, this is a element. Even though it doesn't have anything inside of it, it's an element on its own when it's inside of a set. Just look at it as just in a symbol. Inside. If it's in squigglies. Inside the brackets. If it's outside the squigglies, it's a set. Okay. If it's inside, it's just a symbol. Okay. <laughs> All these little symbols to get used to. Yes, it is. And that's one thing you have to get straight in your head. What does it mean in different situations? I hope so. Review. Well, I'll have a, a day where you can ask me lots of questions and I'll give you some, some work to do, but most of review is learn. Yeah. Learn. You write down all of these symbols, write the English next to each one of them, and understand what they actually mean definition-wise. It's just like um, a science class when you're learning new words and what they mean, and then you learn about what they do. So there's layers of this stuff, and you have to know all the layers. You need to know the symbols, you need to know what they mean, you need to know how to read them in English, and you need to know how they work. It's, it, yeah, it's fun. Oh, yeah. Look, it's only 1030. All right. So let's be really clear on this, right? This is equal to this. Because this one represents that one. They mean exactly the same thing. That's how we define it. So the null set equals two. Yes. Therefore, when I write something like this, this is a false statement. Oh, I'm sorry. That's a false statement because they're equal. Because they're identical. So if you see this and get confused with it, replace it with an empty set of phrases, like an empty set, and go from there. But sometimes that gets confusing because then you get things like this. Yes. You don't want to end up with things like that. Yeah. All right. Onwards and forwards. Um, some ideas that we need. This is two, three. I'm only going to start it. I am not going to finish it. Around here, me and the book start differing just a little bit. 
how we deal things, um, the order that I'm going to teach things. It might get a little messed up, but it's all in the book and it's all going to be in my notes and everywhere else. And the idea is, what, what happens here is I'm going to start merging a bunch of different ideas into one idea. So, for instance, if we talk about a Venn diagram, Venn diagram starts off with a box, and this box represents the universe. What did I tell you about the universe? No. <laughs> the universe is going to contain all of the elements I want to talk about. Remember I said if we wanted to talk about A and what's not in A, I better keep it confined, otherwise it goes off to crazy land. So the universe is going to be defined like all the numbers between 1 and 10, all the numbers between 1 and 25, all the letters between A and M. So you'll specify that in this I, I have to. Otherwise, if I say if it's not in A, then it could be this table. And I might not want to talk about the table. I want to talk about, you know, other things. So, yes, I have to specify what the universe is. I also have to specify, you know, sets. So if this is my universe, and I say, well, U is equal to... Uh, the natural numbers such that 1 is less than the x is less than 8, less than or equal to 8. So from the numbers from 1 to 8, from 1 to 8, natural numbers. So this is my universe. So all of these numbers would go inside of this box. But I'm going to be a little bit more organizational about it. I'm going to give you a set A. The set A is the natural numbers such that x is prime. Remember the prime numbers? We talked about these before. 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, so forth and so on. What a Venn diagram does now is, well, the universe is the box, and A, obviously, is inside of, well, I have to be clear here, x is a prime number, and x is less than or equal to 8. Let's keep it yeah, simple. Therefore, A is inside of the universe. So A is a subset of the universe. Now, when we're talking about a universe and we have sets underneath it, they're automatically subsets of the universe, because that's what I want to talk about. So in the Venn diagram, we're going to draw A as a circle. It has to be a perfect circle. I take off points for A's. Why? I'm joking. How about that? <laughs> Nobody can draw a perfect circle. The only person in history that could draw a perfect circle by hand was Michelangelo. That's how he got his job to paint the Vatican City. Sistine oh, Chapel. He, they usually went out to artists and said, give me a sample of your work and we'll see if we want to use you. Yeah, he, didn't he didn't want to give up any of his work, so he threw it down on his, uh, what do you call it, parchment? And he whipped out a circle and gave it to the guy. And he got the job. Pretty cool. Um, so, what do I put inside A? Well, I put in the prime numbers that are less than A. Which are 2, 3, 5, and 7. They go inside of A. So when you draw the circle and you put elements inside of it, you're saying the set of A has the elements 2, 3, 5, and 7. Alright? But then we have this universe overlaying it, and it's all the numbers from 1 to 8. So I put them, they can't go in the circle because they're not part of... A. A. So, so they go but they still have to go the in, the, in the box. They in have the to universe. go outside the circle, inside the box. So one, four, four six, eight. and eight. They go outside of the set, but still in the universe. universe. Now here's the cool part. If you look inside the rectangle, you have every number from one to eight. I don't care if it's inside of A. I just care if it's inside of the universe. In the universe. So you have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They're all there. So this would be a picture of a Venn diagram of the universe and the set of A. So would you say this is like another way of showing Another way of describing or showing exactly where the elements are in set, multiple sets. Which even gets more fun. Now, what's really cool is if I want to look for this, I could do it element by element over here. Or I could just look at the picture and go, well, what's this little symbol called? Again? Not an A. Well, what's the symbol called? Um, it begins with a C. A C. It's like saying you have beautiful hair. Compliment. Compliment. So this is the complement of A, which means all the elements that are not in A. 
Well, I can do that from the picture real easy. You take your thumb, cover up the circle, and what's left over must be not in a A. If you're covering up A, everything else must be what's not in A. So the answer to this is going to be 1468. So I can write that. Set of 1468. It's everything that's not inside of the set. Everything is not. So it can't be in that circle at all. So it has to be outside the circle, but still in the universe. You can't go outside the universe. Say that again. Everything. Everything that is not in A. That is not in A. Now, how do you do the work with 6 and 8 out of the universe? Not A. Oh, how do I get these numbers? Yes, sir. Well, the universe is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, I used up 2, 3, 5, and 7 inside of A. Oh. So that leaves me 1, 4, 6, 8. Why did you put those numbers in the circle? Because they're in A. a is these are the prime numbers less than A. So is it better to bottom up, like so what you did, work from the you set? Work, you work inside the sets first, and then whatever's left over, you put out in the universe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So do the set for you, the universe lags? Yes, the universe is always what's left for the outside. Yeah. outside. These are all in the universe. So you've got to get this clear. This is all in the universe. Okay. What I'm determining is what's inside of A and what's not in A. So you do what's inside of A first, and then you find out what's not inside of A. The universe is what contains all of it, but set of A. A is kind of distinguishing what's A and what's left. It's, it's like separating. Yeah, it's like going to the grocery store, you pick out these, but they have these available. Can you still get all okay, many of these. You're going to see you a ton of these, trust me. But not today. Today, uh, I only have five minutes, so I'm going to just show you possibilities. Possibilities. Examples of possibilities? No, no, just game. possibilities. Oh. <laughs> possibilities. Perfect. If I increase this to two sets, A and B, there are different possibilities. <coughs> Possibility number one, A could be over here all by himself, and B could be over here all by himself. In other words, there are no elements of A that are in common with B. B. They're what's considered, this is called disjoint. Disjoint. But all, all in the universe. But they, yeah, they have to be in the universe. But A and B are called disjoint because there's no elements in common. So you'd have the elements of A over here, the elements of B over here, and they have nothing in common. We could do this to this classroom rather quickly. All the guys stand on the right, all the girls stand on the left. Unless there's some guy girl in here. Anyone? Anyone? And we're not talking about uh, transvestite or anything. I'm talking about physical genetics, guy girl. Uh, just in case. <laughs> Got to be careful of all the classifications. <coughs> all right. There is the possibility that we're talking about the exact same set. If I draw one circle and I label it A and B, they must be equal. equal. So here we have A is equal to B. Um, you might want to say, well, then disjoint should be A is not equal to B. But that's not true because it, they still should, could share some element. element. So you've got to be careful with that. There is a possibility of this picture. Here's B, and inside of it is A. How would you describe that set? A is a subset of B, or proper subset would probably be even better. But I'm just going to say subset. A is definitely a subset of B, just in case you know there's nothing in this part of the picture. Uh, the last possible setup. I think I've covered most of them, right? They're nothing in common. Everything is in common. Some of it's in common. But all of A is inside of B, but that's not always true. It's possible that you have just a little bit of A sharing a little bit of B. Now, this one... This would be A, this would be B. This covers everybody. This covers the first case, the second case, and the third case, and itself. Uh, the reason it does this is, if A and B are disjoint, you would have elements um, <coughs> just in A and elements just in B, and nothing in this little I piece. So that would cover the first picture. If A is equal to B, everything would be in the I piece. And nothing would be to the left or to the... Right. right, so it covers the second picture. 
If it's the third pitcher, then all the elements of A would be in the I piece, and then there might be some elements over here to the far right. And then it takes care of itself. So this is what's called the general Venn diagram. The general Venn. It covers all possibilities with two sets. Uh, the maximum number of sets we're going to deal with is three. Above three, we'd have to go into the third dimension and start drawing beach balls. <laughs> and we're not going to do that. So so. Uh, the only one we're going to deal with is a general deck. Everything can be described with one picture, so we'll stick with this one, one picture. picture. Rather than drawing a different picture for each case. So what is that going to say at the top there? It could be anything. It could be disjoint, it could be equal, it could be subset, it could be a mixture of things. Some people like it's just, a, it's called general. There's no way of writing a symbol on top of it like this. <laughs> These are very specific cases. This is a very general case that covers the specific cases. Oh, when I draw the diagram, I, might the draw. I don't care what's going on with A and B, that's the picture I draw. Because it covers all possible elements. Yeah, go ahead. For two sets. That one. Yeah. There's another one for three. We'll get to that later. We haven't even finished this one. I your book, thanks. All right, homework. Two, two. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Homework. I, I can go really slow.